Hello everyone. I would like to introduce you to my new padded deck, which is somehow Kranix returned. And uh, as you can kind of probably imagine what's the deck gonna be about, it's a little bit about how to recur units with Kranix and beat down your opponent. But before we go to that deck and describe what it's gonna be built like and what is the idea behind it, a short story why did I even build that deck? Because uh, I attended a 60 people uh, Polish tournament in Bydgoszcz, um, that was like a week ago or a week and a half. Um, we have, a, I think at least, we have a very high level of play in Poland. We have a lot of really great players and a lot of good mentality, a lot of good deck lists, maybe some metagame, maybe some not a metagame, but in general, the overall level is very high. Before that, I also played in a showdown and I copied Wu's decklist with like 59 out of 60 and I managed to win it uh, and I fell in love with the green-blue control. So for the Bitgosh tournament that we played a week and a half ago, I played Kira, which was essentially Wu's decklist, but it was 60 out of 60 instead of just 59 out of 60. So I literally just copy-pasted his deck and I managed to grab a top A finish in it. So that again reinforced my feeling that green and blue is something I like playing, but it also is pretty good. And I know how to navigate it because in my eyes, in general, in this game, you need to know your deck in and out. You need to know how to pilot your deck because otherwise you will lose some crucial moments in your games, which will snowball out of control. This is why a deck mastery comes into the place. So I feel like green and blue is something that is just naturally um fell in line with but before we go into it i just wanted to show you maybe not show you but read out some of the notes that i had with the kira decklist that i played um in the bitgosh event with the 60 people because it was actually quite um quite a tournament it was a lot of um really interesting developments so first round i played against whoop green sabine and the green sabine was very very meta Three records, of course, three pose, I think two or three timely interventions, and I lost one, two. It was very close games, super nail biter. It could have gone either way. And my opponent was playing incredibly well. You could see that he knew how to navigate it in the matchup, and it was like on knife's edge. Then the second round, I played against a Sivine. So <laughs> my morale was really down. I was already 0 1. We were playing six rounds. So if I lose the second game, it's going to be a 0-0 and drop. And in the second Sabine, I feel like not only I played better than in the first round, but also my opponent, I think, was a little bit less experienced in this particular matchup. So I was able to win it 2-1 uh, against him. The one game I lost against this particular Sabine, I got absolutely demolished by 3-4 a cause when I was about to stabilize the game. Now... I was 1-1 after that. Round 3 was against old Han, but it was a green Han, so very standard. And I was able to grind out the matchups uh, 2-0. The, the first game was kind of close, the second one was not even close. So not much to say here. Uh, round 4, it was against Yellow Boba, which, as you know, the green-blue control just completely farms. Like, if I would like to choose a single matchup that I could play six times in a day, that would be Yellow Boba. Like, with a Kira deck or a Krennic deck, you want to play against Yellow Boba. That deck just doesn't do much against your deck. It's almost like a free win. Of course, you can lose sometimes, but, you know, overall, you should be winning this matchup. So after that, I was looking pretty good. I was 3-1 uh, already, and my next match was against Hans Blue. Hans. <laughs> He's not German, sorry. Han Blue, the new Han, um, the version with all the discards and so on. I already knew how to approach this matchup in my head, even though I never played it in, in, the, in, in the past. Because you want to probably conserve your plays. You might not want to play anything round one, uh, turn one, to have more cards in your hand, to avoid the force throw, to avoid pillage and so on. So funnily enough, in the first game of this match against Han Blue, I didn't play a single card on turn one, on turn two, on turn three, and on turn four. 
The first card I played was my Kira activation on turn 5, which was then met with Demise with my opponent. I can't remember what he played, but he just destroyed my Kira, so I couldn't overwhelming Barrage, of course. And my opponent played an A-Wing, a Yoda, and, and, and a Sabine, if I remember correctly. Like, he had an aggro start, and he beat the shit out of me to, from what I see, 15 HP. So, after that, when I activated the Kira, my first card that I played in the entire game was 5 resource, five resource turn when I ECL'd a Death Trooper to kill one unit and destroy another one. That was my first play. And I was able to win this game pretty steadily first. Is that like still? Like, I'll be honest with you, I have no idea how that happened. Because I just played it out. I, I, my outs were very little. I just played my outs. And somehow I won a game where the first card that I played was at, was at a, round, a, a turn four. Like absolutely mental. Then the second game was not even close. I just wanted the entire match to zero. So I was looking at 4-1. Uh, and if I wanted to finish up in top eight, I needed to win the next round. Because my tiebreakers was definitely not good enough to like bubble my, uh, bubble my way into the top 8 by being a 4-2. And my last matchup was against another Kira. And I think it was literally the same decklist, card by card from Ward, so the exact 60 as I played. But I think the main factor was the fact that I had a lot of experience in playing mirror matches in those green-blue mirror matches when I was playing Krennic. And I transferred all of that knowledge to Kira but I also understood that Kira is vital to the game later stages when you have to clear one of the first big threats with your flip. And my opponent, I think, didn't know that or maybe didn't want to execute that game plan and had flipped his Kira very early. So I soaked some damage in and I was able to just win late game uh, because of understanding the threats, uh, like how to how to f how to essentially respond to threats and build my own board a little bit more um, convincingly against my opponent, and I was able to be five one and get into the top eight. And in the top eight, I played against the winner of the tournament, which was the um, new Han ECL deck that I thought I was pretty decently built into, but. Not only I played against a really good player, who was, by the way, the same opponent from my own hometown that we played during our showdown in the final, and I beat him. Um, I think it was 2-1. So now he got his revenge because he beat me 2-0 in the top 8 of this tournament. Um, and he's a very good player, but I felt like I didn't really even have a chance at playing because the draws were, let's say, just not the best. Even though I had some cards to play, but it didn't feel like that Han, Han uh, Blue game when I didn't play a card till round four. Anyway, so that's like a short introduction because this experience in that tournament made me think that even though the Kira deck is a fantastic deck, I didn't like the Sabine matchup. I didn't like the Sabine matchup because I felt that when I sit down against a Sabine, it doesn't really matter much who is sitting on the other side of the table. Sabine is such a powerful deck that I don't want to insult anyone because I played Sabine a lot myself, but the deck in its current form plays itself to some degree. Like, you just need to understand that in most matchups, you just slam Poe Dameron at 5, you don't ECL against uh, unless you really need it, and then you ECL Wrecker, and then you Wrecker, and then you Wrecker. With timely intervention, maybe. It's like... The deck is really... Like, you see number, you play number. Turn 4, you have 4 resources. You play Dark Saber if you can. You just sequence it correctly. Turn 5... I mean, sorry, 5 resources. Play Paul Dameron. 6 resources, play Wrecker. And so on. And, like, on if you don't have Dark Saber, you play K2SO. Like, it's... The, the decisions that you play there are very simple in it, the current form of the deck. So I thought that whenever I, whenever I sit against a Sabine, I cannot really outplay the deck in any meaningful manner. 
while if I sit against anything else that is not a green Sabine, it feels like I might have an advantage because of the experience that I have and the ability to outplay people or understand the matchups in a more meaningful way. And I didn't have that against Sabine. So I started thinking, what can I do while still playing blue-green to increase the odds of me playing into a Sabine while also still having decent ch chance into anything else, but have also the edge of playing a deck that might not be a cookie cutter, so it will give me the, the, the advantage of surprising my opponent. So this is where the idea of going back to Krennic, because I really like the idea of like the passive that he has and the early, uh, early leader coming out with the restore, but also buffing my units to have better trades against Sabine and having a different angle for the end game. So let me just show you the deck. That's how I come to the conclusion how to build this deck right now. I'm not saying it's finished, by the way. But I hope you guys uh, will enjoy how this deck is being, um, well, built right now. So, essentially, the idea is very, very similar to the old Krennic and the Kira because the base is the same. You still have six ramped spells, you still have ECL, you have, you know, Inferno Force. And you have the, some Vigilances, Takedowns, Barrage, Darth Faders, but there are some crucial differences. So, the main idea behind this deck is, of course, to use Palpatine's Return. And Palpatine's Return is incredibly powerful with any of your Force units. I'm not looking into, like, even discarding them myself in any meaningful way, like, to accelerate even more the deck because with the double ramp you're gonna get to the first vader first mole or the first snoke pretty fast and then you can get into a very big uh swing turns with the palpatine's return because all of the three really big units that you have apart from one avenger are essentially force units and they have immediate board effect darth vader obviously like you know maul that's the thing when i played kira in bitgosht I had one mole in that decklist for Mu. And that one mole, I didn't play him often. But whenever I played him, I was like, God damn! That guy slaps the desk. Like, man, the impact that he had was insane. So I really wanted to play three of them. And that's how I came to the decision to, to build this deck and to abuse this, right? So he is insane. And because of the fact that I'm going to play more moles, I wanted to have a beatdown plan. And a beatdown plan from a deck that you don't expect to be a beatdown is very surprising. This is essentially a mid-range deck that kills your opponent with multiple mauls. Or, in other, you know, situation, multiple vaders. Like, it depends really how it goes. But you don't look to finish the game with the big capital ships. In my first iteration of this deck, I didn't even have an Avenger. Like, I literally just had, I think, like another two drop instead of it. But after playing it a little bit, I realized that just having one Avenger makes it makes the deck much more flexible because, as you know, Palpatine's Return is a toolbox. It can return any unit. Mostly, of course, the endgame. But if you get to draw that one Avenger, you can suddenly, and this is, of course, an extreme example, but you could play it four times. Right? Because you can return it three times. And then the idea of the sideboard deck is of the, of the side deck is essentially, well, now I'm going to improve my game plan against control. As I said in the beginning, I don't think this deck is finished. I'm still testing it out, swapping some cards in and out. They're going to be, I'm going to be talking about the other options that I, I consider here. But the idea, TLDR, I want to have better odds into Sabine. That's why Krennic, more two drops, back to like some Star Vipers and the Phase 3 Dark Trooper. I'm going to talk about them in a, in a second. And then, post sideboard, I will improve my chances against heavy controls, soft controls. And against any other deck that I will play against, in game one, people will not expect to be beaten to death. 
by some small units that have a lot of attack because of the Kranic buff, and then multiple moles just smashing their face. So that's the entire idea, right? You want to deal unsuspecting damage to the opponent and then suddenly win out of nowhere. Remember that there are some crazy turns that you can do this. Like, you can, like, Palpatine return combined with power of the dark side when you have nine resources is mind-blowingly good. It doesn't sound really impressive when I say it out loud, but once you play it and you see that nine resources that you can like open first with power of the dark side and then maul from the graveyard, specifically when the opponent is like, oh, he has six mana. He didn't see, he didn't see it at Palpatine's return. It's, turn, it's game one. And you suddenly just play a Vader or a Maul or a Snake for uh, Snoke for six mana. The guy's like, what the? What just happened? How did I lose this game? Like, I didn't predict this. This is how you win a lot with this deck. So, um, I think like this deck has really good chances against Sabine. There may be still some improvements, but I have to test it out uh, a little bit more. But I wanted to share this deck because I'm just happy playing it, you know? And I feel like it, it, it's not something that you see often. When I play on camera, because I didn't see a single Kranich for, I don't know, weeks, you know? So uh, let's go maybe card by card and explain uh, why, are some why some of the choices are being made uh, by me over here. So we're gonna, oh my God, this is not it. <laughs> where, do, where do I have my cards? Over here. So first card, um, I, I forgot. Of course, before we go into the discussion of the cards, I would like to introduce you to today's sponsor of the video, which is rebel.pl. This is the distributor of Star Wars Unlimited in Poland, but they also have a full assortment of different board games, uh, systems, uh, Warhammer, everything that you want to buy your kid and for yourself, uh, other card games as well, accessories and so on. So if you're Polish or maybe you live nearby Poland, if you would like to order for them, they do have international shipping and it's called rebel.pl, which is kind of coincidence because the, the shop is very old, but it's called Rebel. So it kind of fits as well, even, you know, for today's topic when it comes to Star Wars. All right, but... Let's go and discard, um, discard, discuss entire deck card by card. So first, Pike Sentinel. Pike Sentinel, I'm not a fan of. I'll be honest with you. Not in this deck, not in Kranich. I don't think he's that great. Instead of him, we could play another two drop. Like, for example, uh, a Viper Prop Droid. But right now, I'm testing Pike Sentinel to see how it goes. And sometimes it's more useful because of the Sentinel trait coming from out of Vader. And also you have to think about the fact that Pike Sentinel is great against the Sabine unit. Because when you drop it and your opponent has Sabine, um, that's not something that you get into Kira, by the way. If you drop Pike Sentinel and your opponent has a Sabine unit and you play um, Krennic, when he attacks with the Sabine unit into the Pike Sentinel and will use the damage to the Pike Sentinel before the combat damage, then Pike Sentinel becomes a 3-2 because of the passive ability of Krennic, which means that essentially Pike Sentinel, when playing against Sabine, trade against, trades against every single 2-drop apart from um, the 2-mana 3-3 three, three green Oh my god, Rebel, well, the most basic green unit, the two mana for you that I absolutely forgot the name of. So, Pike Sentinel has some legs in Krennic, but you can also try out Prop Droid instead of it. Now, the next choice is a little bit baffling, but when you think about it, you're like, oh wait, it actually makes sense. Still testing it out. So, I had three of them, then I had two of them. Then I went back to three. Now I test again two because the two drops are interchangeable and you can adjust it to your metagame a lot. But what I like about Ruthless Assassin in the Krennic deck, first and foremost, it can come into the game as a 4-1. So essentially it's a 10-1 drop that has four attack, one HP and overwhelm. 
which pushes that small amount of damage that might matter. But not only that, it has the underworld key, uh, keyword, sorry, that can matter with Mole. But he also has synergy, and I literally have won games because of that. Because when you play him, he can damage his friendly unit in space or in ground, which can change the outcome of the damage because remember Kranid, Kranid deals plus uh, sorry buffs attack by one when a unit is damaged so out of nowhere you can have some good some good trades because you get that plus one or you just deal, deal one additional damage to the base because of this ruthless assassin buff i know it's a odd example but i literally had it happen in games scout by pusua look i would love to have a regional governor but <laughs> but since the idea is to deal some damage in this deck, Skyed by Pasu is just better. Like, it's literally just better, and it also can come out of the evader, right? So not much to talk about here. Uh, Death Tripper, you play it. We all know how it works. It's fantastic. It's fabulous. It's even better in Krennic because it can come out of the... Like, it just comes out and it's a 4-1. Like, it's phenomenal. The worst part about Death Trooper is like when someone plays the K2SO and you're like, oh my god, that's a lot of damage, you know? And you killed that K2SO as well to some degree. Sometimes that's good, sometimes that's bad. Um, next card, Phase 3 Dark Trooper. Now, this is silently my favorite card in the deck. Why? I ECL the shit out of this guy. Specifically against Sabine. Specifically when she has Sabine unit. You ECL this bad boy into the ECL, uh, sorry, into the Sabine unit. And this guy is a 3 3 3, attacks into the Sabine unit, which is 2 3, kills the Sabine unit, gets an experience token, so becomes a 4 4 with 2 damage, but then it gets the buff from Koenig, which essentially makes it a 5 2. Now, what does 5 attack do against Sabine when you played it on 3 resources? Yes, it does kill the leader by itself it puts sabine players in such an awkward spot that they will probably avoid playing sabine on turn one because of that in like game two maybe game three like just the the idea that this guy is in your deck is like insane and in this deck actually you use the escl pretty freely like you can use the ecl for all of the small units you can use the skybark the scout bike pursuer to kill a greedo you don't feel bad about this like it, in most cases it's actually pretty decent like it really depends on how the hand looks like and how you feel about the future turns how they will evolve so phase three dark trooper is like in my eyes pretty good in this deck now super lazy technician yeah whatever whatever Steadfast Battalion, I have two of those in the deck. And I'll be honest with you, they are only here against Boba. That's the only reason. If I don't have ECL, those units probably end up in the, in the resource row. If I do have ECL, sometimes 555 five, five, EC, like ECL is not that bad, even if you don't have the leader out. But if you play against Boba, I feel like that Battalion, just the threat of it, having it show it, Sometimes not even show it. Sometimes people forget you You can have it. Because it's 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 a card that kind of rotated out. Right? I, but it's still pretty great in this deck. So, if I would play in a local metagame that doesn't have Boba Fett, I would probably not play this card. But having just two in the deck makes me a little bit safer. Darth Fate, whatever. You just, you just play, the, play the guy three times. That's it. You don't you play a green blue that can go to seven mana, you don't play three Vaders, what are you doing? Green blue? Yeah, green blue black, right? So you have to play three Darth Vaders. There's no other way. This card is bonkers. I don't even understand, I'll be honest with you. How the hell this card is losing value or was losing value? I didn't really check the card market for quite some time. But there's no way in my mind that this card should ever lose on the market value because the card is nuts it will probably be a staple for green blue for the next two or three expansions or un until the rotation comes you know mao already explained i think this guy is just nuts you know like ambush overwhelm it's like a wrecker but different 
a bit war a little bit worse of wreck than Rekka, but again it has force so you can use the palpatine's return on it and it doesn't require you like any kind of synergy you don't need acl you don't need that timely intervention and he just smashes a card it doesn't have the two for one value typically sometimes you will use the on attack with, the, with another underworld unit but not always depending on what you are facing sometimes having a damaged mall is better than deleting another unit remember that in in, in this particular deck you're very low on action count so you're gonna have initiative a lot of times and this guy if he attacks twice it's probably game over you know uh and also when he's damaged he's eight attack you know so that's pretty sweet now snoke maybe you should play three he's pretty nuts and because it's force and you can play him for six mana for six resources here that's pretty that's pretty good like i mean he he's decent and you kind of need answers uh to yellows um uh, spaceships right so yeah this guy's kind of needed now inferno 4 i currently have two in the deck and depending on again on local metagame you might actually go to three if you face a lot of yellow you might need that inferno 4 just against the lurking tie phantoms uh it's just a good to drop right black sun starfighter again just a good card for the vader it's a good ecl against a wings it becomes a 4-1 and that's pretty decent now. 4 1 Sentinel in space. Yeah, that's good. Consortium Star Viper. I again have only two. So I play like two um um two um Inferno Force, two Black Sun, and two Star Vipers. And it can like be shifted around to go three here, two here, three there, depending on your lo local metagame. Or like how you feel about testing this deck. But Star Viper. Is always better in Krennic than in Kira because of the low action count that you have in this deck. Like, you never have a leader ability that you will ever use. So, you most likely will have initiative in this deck. If you have initiative, Star Viper becomes pretty good. ECL Star Viper against a Sabine, against a Red Free, A Wing, whatever they play, you kind of feel like, oh, I'm kind of winning. You know, it's like you're kind of winning. Because the Star Viper healed and got two cards or just stayed in the in the game in space and suddenly the Sabine is looking at a 4-1 or, or a 4-2 Star Viper that just smashes the Sabine's base every turn. That's a problem. And suddenly from a nuisance that has three attack, it actually becomes a real beater with four. It makes a difference. That plus one attack is really big. Now, Avenger, in the original decklist, I didn't have a single Avenger. I didn't have a single capital ship. But as I explained before, like just having one just gives a little bit of freedom. Now, events. Power of the Dark Side, no reason to explain it. The card is just bonkers. Um, resupply, of course, the same. Like You just play six ramps. Takedown is in here out of necessity necessity i would say and some form of flexibility um but i'm really not a fan of the card you know so not much to say vigilance is here just to uh, just against like sabine you know like you probably will never use this card for anything else than heal five and destroy something that has three shp and if you have to play it against anything else than a sabine then you probably will end up just like giving a shield to a unit and maybe defeating something that has 3 HP. Like the heal in most cases will not be that, that big of a deal. The mill, probably not that big of a deal as well. Overwhelming, but whatever. And play 3, right? And now Palpatine's return. Now, the one thing they didn't mention yet. The red, blue hand, or red, blue, ray, but, you know... Are pretty popular the hannas are obviously a little bit more popular because it's more powerful but they have main deck discard and playing palpatine's return obviously is the main reason to play this deck in its current form but also coincidentally increases drastically the odds against the discard decks against you if you play game one there's there's absolutely no way that your opponent will think that you play palpatine's return so you can force your opponent huh, to use like a K2SO discard 
for you to pitch a Vader Maul Snoke. And then suddenly, at six resources, you play Return. You get an incredibly big unit, preferably a Vader. Like, if you play against a Blue Hun, um, you preferably, your first Palpatine Return, specifically when it's before you get to seven resources, you want to get a unit that gets some form of value. Vader is the value machine because there's almost no chance of whiffing in this deck when the Vader comes out. So if the Vader can kill a unit and get another unit on board, even if your opponent has a removal, you still have something on the board very early in the game. Obviously, you're going to play anything. Like if you can play a Maul at six resources, or if you can play a Snokes at six resources, if they get any value, that's still a fantastic play. But Vader against the blue hand is ideal because if you play against blue decks they're probably gonna have a removal so you're looking forward to that vader but in in general this deck just has a very big chance at winning against the all blue red discard decks that are out there just by default because game one you might just snowball out of control now um some cards that can be used in the deck but they are not in the list right now. Viper Pro Droid, as I said, the two drops are very loose. I feel like you can pl play the Probe Droid. I feel like it's still very useful. The stats are good. Um, and they, tr they, they essentially trade with Sabine units, which is important. Uh, but again, I'm testing currently without the Probe Droid, and it feels like the deck is doing fine. Scanning Officer... I would only play this card in a local meta game if I know that I play against a lot of yellow decks or a lot of hunter decks, if they are in your local meta game. But it's a consideration. The downside of this card is that it cannot be pulled by Vader. But the upside is, if you drop it, you go first scanning officer against a Han yellow, and then there's like <laughs> even one smuggle card, your opponent is incredibly sad. Lone Pike. Now... That's a card I would like to have in the deck. But right now, I don't know which card to cut. The first thing that comes to mind is probably the Steadfast Battalion. And you could maybe try playing Lone Pikes instead of Steadfast Battalion. I will probably check that out later on. Because the card is, in general, just incredibly good. In Kira, Lone Pike is fantastic. And I feel like in Krennic, he can still be very good. His stats are awesome. He gets damage. He has 5 attack for 4 right? Like, ECL this guy in Krennic, it kills any unit that is on board, most likely. I don't think there's many units that will survive the 4 attack. He stays on board, and suddenly he's a 5-3. He's a 5-4. Right? It's, it's pretty substantial difference. The 4 and 5 is a big breaking point in getting a lot of value. So, Lone Pike is probably something that we'll be testing very soon in the deck to see how it how it manages to play make an opening i don't feel like that it's a card that i need but if i would be having a lot of yellow in my meta game make an opening probably should be main deck just to answer those pesky ships client i'll be i'll be honest with you i don't even know why i put him in like in this deck i i don't think you need client. No, you know what? No, scrap it. You don't need it. No, don't, 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 don't. We we end the video here at make an opening. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna share the link to the deck uh, below. Um, hope you guys like the video. I'm a uh, ex. Oh, sorry, not this scene. I'm an ex professional Hearthstone player, but I don't sacrifice that much time to play Star Wars Unlimited, so I don't have like really like hundreds of hours in the game yet but i feel like i can gr i can grasp concepts in uh, initially and instantly and understand the decks and like the the overall thought process behind the decks and i love this game i feel like star wars unlimited in all of my years of playing so many different card games i feel like star wars unlimited is legit no joke no cap the best card game i have ever played the reason for that, I don't even talk about the like the universe. The mechanic of it, the interaction between the players, the back and forth, and the freedom of building your deck, 
makes every game unique. Every match that I play feels unique. And I feel like have, I have much bigger space to outplay the opponents just because of how complicated the game is, but simple on the surface the game looks like. And I'm super excited to compete in this game and create some content from time to time. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you have any comments, if you will try out the deck and feel like you have some ideas, maybe you have some, you know, some experiences that I didn't have myself, let me know. Because I feel like this deck can be real good. Anyway, see you in the next video. Bye-bye.